unleashing the wealth of available KNX data, the title is. And I'll explain you why we think this title is justified. What's on the agenda? Why do we do KNX IoT? And what is the added value that it brings to especially our customer, the installer? Let's look at installers that are mainly active in the residential sector. Let's look at those who are mainly active in the commercial sector. And let's look at the so-called system integrators. How did we connect to KNX installations? Uh, and how do we still connect to KNX installations today? And how does KNX IoT want to connect to KNX installations? How will KNX IoT impact the installer, especially on his work he does in EPS? Uh, that's the last question we want to answer during this presentation. Of course, I don't have to tell you that in a today's KNX installation that all devices are designed to really understand one another. And so, for instance, uh, this lovely wall switch uh, is from ABB and it can send a message to dimmer light. Well, this other device uh, understands uh, these messages and can act accordingly. This movement detector can also switch a light. This other product can also understand these messages. Uh, this is a push button from another company and it can control blinds. Well, there are manufacturers uh, providing blind actuators. They can understand these commands. This guy can control the room temperature. This is a valve from yet another company. Well, this valve can act accordingly based on the commands sent by the room temperature controller. This is a boiler controller. This device can actually exchange information with all the valves in a home or a building and then also adjust the uh, hot water production accordingly. All this information can be shown on uh, screens, uh, be it a larger PC screen or a, a mobile device screen. And uh, how are all these products tied together? Well, of course, we all know that in KNX, 95% uh, of all the products are tied together because the product descriptions are delivered for them. And these can be read in by the ETS and the ETS ties all these uh, products together. So the ETS uh, documents in a standardized way all the links between the different functions of all the different devices or all the different manufacturers. And the installer uses this tool uh, to document which devices are located where. And he gives a name and a number to these links. And all these links, they combine functions that serve a specific purpose. For instance, an all off function when leaving the house or changing the set temperature of a room or whatever. But the question is uh, that an installer can rightfully ask is, do I have an added benefit far from linking these devices? Do I have an added benefit of documenting precisely uh, all these functions in this ETS? Does the customer pay me for this effort? If we look at uh, KNX today, we uh, can see that we do produce a lot of data. Uh, the ETS data model is currently based on an XML XSD scheme. And the XSD is part of every installation of a manufacturer tool. It covers the installation, the manufacturer, and the KNX data. Uh, the installation data is actually created by the ETS user. Uh, the user will create a topology. He will create, or he or she will create a building structure. Uh, he or she will create group addresses and assign them to devices. The manufacturer data is created by the manufacturer. Uh, 
applications uh, are created by manufacturers and they are supplied by the so-called KNX product files. And there is also data that is managed by the KNX association itself, uh, made available online as part of every installation of an ETS or a manufactured tool. Uh, so for instance, the data point types uh, are managed by KNX itself. This is a lot of data. And data is seen in these days of digitalization as the new oil. So as an installer, I create a lot of data that could be very interesting to others. But is it beneficial to myself to create all this data? So let's look at the, an installer typically active in the residential sector. So more and more installer is confronted with the fact that his customer also wants to buy smart consumer electronics and wants to link to external services like a online weather service. So I need to convince my customer that KNX is not a closed system and integration with all these add-on devices, as I will call them, is easily possible. And that KNX is future-proof, uh, meaning that any future uh, devices, left or the right-hand side, will be integratable in the future. Actually, as an installer, I want to do what I do best, and that's making KNX installation. I'm not too fond of integrating these, these products. At best, this is done by the customer. Just, I just would like to hand over my KNX project, and uh, this is much easier calculatable than having to integrate all these devices into uh, an existing KNX installation. And also the warranty of on my delivered project uh, is not broken when uh, all these new things are integrated by the customer. So assuming I am a, an installer active in the commercial sector or I am a system integrator, so I integrate different systems that are by definition not compatible to one another. So for instance, I need to interlink a KNX installation to media equipment, to fire and security, to facility management. Then my customer actually wants that I can easily integrate those. And actually the same arguments as for an installer active in the residential sector applies. And I would like to make sure that the customer uh, from the right hand side is only able to access data on the left hand side that he's entitled to. So I preferably would like that he does not have an all over access to this data. I would, as a system integrator, would like to integrate such devices that are not uh, intrinsically KLX compatible. I would like to integrate those with a low effort. So let's look at how we access data in the past and how we still partially do today. So in the very early days, we wanted to link a PC with visualization to the bus. Then we made use of an RS-232. Well, these were the days. In more recent days, we could use a USB for that. In the more recent days, we can make use of a KNX Net IP interface. So for approximately the last 10 to 15 years, we already are able to link a KNX installation to an IP network uh, using a KNX Net IP interface. But for all these solutions, uh, the data is always offered KNX style. If somebody wants to tap into this data from here, then he needs to understand our messages 
and he needs to read the spec, he, so he needs to understand the KLX standard. So to be able to convert our data into his data. And if I want to understand uh, these uh, messages, I again need to enter the data I have entered into the ETS into the thing I want to have it talk to KLX, or I have to make a proprietary use of the exported ETS project. data. Uh, also, the access to the data was not secured until we uh, designed the KLX uh, IP secure extension to KLX. And all these interfaces, they offer full access. There is no possibility to limit access to certain data only. And some device groups were never made KLX compatible because it was too cumbersome to, because some devices, they cannot have a TP uh, interface and some devices uh, are not suitable to be supported in ETS. But the world has moved on since uh, the design of KLX and KLX Net IP. So there are new requirements. Uh, the new requirements come from these giants, uh, so uh, Google, Apple, and Amazon, and comes from the IT sector. The world of the information technology in, and the Internet of Things simply wants to have the data which is created or generated by the KLX system and wants to have it in a format that they understand not in the KLX format. And they want to collect this data with protocols they understand and they commonly use. So they want this data provided via a RESTful interface and they collect the data with HTTPS or with WebSockets. And they want to fetch this data in a secured way. So this is a perfect win-win situation. We can keep our world and we can interact with others. So how can we fulfill these requirements? The current format of exporting our data, so our project data, is not very suitable. Uh, we can say, okay, use the ETS project file, the XML file, but this XML file changes too often because we make too many changes to our KLX system. So with ETS6, we will, for instance, introduce KLX S mode multi. So this is a system extension, uh, which will then be will then crystallized in the ETS XML data. Also, uh, this needs to be understood by the external party. So the non-KLX things, they uh, want when they want to make use of this data, they have to adapt too frequently to our changing format. So we, in our KNX IoT solution, we need to make sure that this format does not change so often. And this format is machine interpretable. Uh, so we need to describe the world as a so-called ontology. An ontology is a structured way to document the meaning of data. And we need to export our ETS project information as linked data in, in the so-called JSON-LD format. Uh, for this, we are currently working on an export, uh, export tool. This export tool or this functionality will later on be integrated into ETS. And this data or this ontology with the data uh, this will have the added benefit of being able to map our data to different to other solutions. And it will be much more easy to query the data. How can we fulfill these requirements? For the first stage, uh, we want to make use of RESTful web services to collect data from a new to be designed KNX IoT gateway. Now, this will be done by the so called uh, third party interface or the KNX IoT type 3 interface. 
This will be one single KNX standardized solution for all manufacturers. So not like the KNX web services, of which there were already three different possibilities, OPC UA, Backnet web, web Services, and OBIX. No, we will make one KNX standardized solution for all manufacturers. And via this API, an external party will be able to search uh, information on the topology of the project, the building, the room, the floors, and the imp implemented functionality. And this implemented functionality will be provided with standardized semantics. The data uh, on this interface will be protected by IT security mechanisms. And it will be not uh, KNX specific like KNX secure. And as a first step, we will create a static interface uh, based on open API, because there are widely available tools for that. And this static interface will be versioned. How will you as an installer uh, be confronted with the data on, on a KNX IoT API? As an installer, you will do your work as before. You will create building view elements, so you will create the topology, but it's highly recommended that you also make use of the ETS functions, which are available in the ETS. Because ETS will then, in the background, it will add semantic information on the group objects, on the channels, and on the function points or the group addresses. So when you make an export to a KNX IoT interface, this data will be already included. And in future versions of the product data, also this information, this semantic information, the manufacturer will be able to add that information to his product data. And this will possibly also help improve the planning stage of KNX projects. So there will be a smooth transition of the data between the building designer and the installer, between the planner and the installer. In case you want, uh, of course, to uh, add a KNX IoT gateway to an existing project, of course, these ETS functions were potentially not used because these ETS functions only exist since recent ETS versions. But the manufacturers will be offered the possibility to extend their current product data with missing semantical information, and they can be separated from the current product data. So the ETS can then fetch this additional semantical data for the use projects in the KNX online catalog. And in this way, we will, we will again close the loop. So what are the advantages of the KNX IoT project? The KNX continues to provide a solid data foundation for any type of integration, be it consumer, electronics, non-KNX based solutions or third party services. Third party adapters to KNX can focus on one single interface instead of multiple proprietary interfaces. KNX is a future-proof investment for any type of customer. The KNX installer can focus on what he does best, is making superb KNX installations. The KNX installer can hand over the project and not run into warranty problems. Uh, the KNX installer does not need to provide uncontrolled and unsecured access to data in a KNX installation, of course, provided that he is not already using KNX Secure. When proper, properly documenting a KNX installation in ETS, the KNX IoT interfacing will not cause an additional effort on the side of the installer for new projects. And if semantical data becomes part of the KNX product data, planning of a KNX installation can be considerably simplified. It's, there are uh, less friction losses. So I hope I've been able to convince you of the advantages of the KNX IoT project. 
uh, be on the lookout for the first KNX IoT gateways, which are currently being developed as we speak from a number of KNX manufacturers. Thank you and goodbye.